Just a little reminder that this Sunday, the 22nd at 10 a.m. is our fourth vintage drop over on LoneFox.com. I am so excited. I have been curating and saving these items for months and months, and it is time to get them in your home. So mark your calendars. Oh gosh, the handle just broke off. No! Grab a bucket, grab a bucket, grab a bucket! Yeah. This is a water, this is a water, this is a dining room. I feel it! Come on! Justin's making the water spray! Ah! Oh, please! What's going on? No! Like, no! It's like nothing's broken. The handle's broken. Hello? We are in the kitchen, and we are going to be working on a new space, which I am so excited about. It's the one right behind me, and some of you might know which one it is. I mean, I'm a sure majority based on the title, but we are going to be working on the laundry room, which is actually right through this archway here. And this archway used to be a door. It separated the kitchen, which is in front of me, and the laundry room, but I really wanted the feel of it to be very fluid and you can just walk right in and I just didn't find the need to have a door on the laundry room and as we get into this space too right here you might be able to tell that there actually used to be another door leading into the bathroom and I've mentioned a couple times on the channel that I've been working on another space kind of behind the scenes it'll be coming out shortly and I promise you it's going to be worth the wait it has just been quite a while to finish up that space so while that space is getting finished up we are going to be working on the laundry room which is right in here now I'm on a mission to create the most stunning laundry room that you have ever seen and that's really what I want to do I feel like this space gets such good lighting it has such good bones as well there's so many coves throughout the ceiling it has the original plastic on the walls which give it so much texture we even have the original ironing board in the wall as well which is everything that stayed original throughout the laundry room but of course they did update the tile in here new countertops which are just not very pretty and they also added some cabinetry to the uppers which I definitely will be keeping and I painted in the meantime a color from Benjamin Moore which I'll pop on the screen for you in case you are curious it is time for the massive overhaul in this space and I will say that we are going to first start on the flooring in here because it's going to be a transition from the kitchen flooring which was that square travertine into more of a brick shaped travertine tile which I ordered at the same time and it has been sitting outside for a solid seven months so we are gonna get started on tiling today I want to start off by actually removing the tile in here because I think we're gonna start with tiling in this space first it's gonna be the most tedious task so I kind of want to get that over with now there is this railing that is attached over the top. I don't know if it necessarily fits the vibe of the house. Maybe if it was black, it fit a bit better, but I do wanna maybe find something a little more interesting for right here. And I've seen railings at architectural stores before, so definitely an option. I'm just gonna take this one out for the time being so we can pull out all the time. or the dryer is more heavy. I think the washer is probably heavier. I think so too. <sighs> oh my god! We can pull this one up easy. We might need to remove the whole countertop. Oh, it smells like baby powder in there. One, two, three. Oh, yes! Goodbye countertop! Some of you are curious as to where these are going, and these are actually going in the downstairs unit. The previous owners of the downstairs, they had the, I don't even know, old washers and dryers down there. So we are going to be swapping these downstairs, getting rid or donating the ones that are currently downstairs. And then I actually have some new ones coming that are gonna be going upstairs for our like main laundry situation. After a solid like, how long, 45 minutes, we got them out. No! I'll grab a bucket, grab a bucket, grab a bucket! This is a this is a water the dining room. I feel it! Come on! Justin's making the water spray! Ah! Oh, please! What's going on? No! It's like nothing's broken. The handle's broken. Okay, we have to go to the street and turn it off. Yeah. The street? Grab another bucket. Grab another bucket, Marie. Oh, it just stopped. It just stopped. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, they were just like cheap Target ones. Okay. Oh, 
Okay, so something happened that was only captured on sound, not video. What happened, Drew? Oh, I can't even speak of it at the moment. Well, yeah. this is a hint, I'm completely covered in water. So basically we unscrewed the water pipe, not realizing that it was a pressurized water pipe going into the washer and then tried to turn the water off and the handle broke. So that's what occurred. So now that the washer and dryer are out, we need to remove the baseboard so that we could remove the tiles. So I'm going around and using a crowbar just to remove the baseboards. As you can see here, this cabinet door was added over the top, which inside houses the original cutting, or the original iron board, not cutting board. But I want to build the frame out a little bit more so it's more so a flush look uh, when you open it and it just feels a lot better. So I'm going to pull this trim out. I was just telling Justin after what just occurred with the water, that we should clean the floor up first, but then I realized we're just ripping it out, so might as well just start doing that. So I'm gonna start here, right where we ended in the kitchen. As you guys can see, beautiful kitchen. Not as pretty. So as you may be able to see here, these tiles actually pop up quite easy, which is very nice. I'm not sure if they use the right mortar when they put these down, or I think just large format tiles kind of pop up easily because there's such a large surface area. I also have no idea, so I just am happy they came up so easily. So I pulled all of these tiles off, and then we also ended up scraping all that grout out from in between all the joints, because when you lay your new tile, you want it to be completely flush. We didn't want to have to scrape the mortar off of this surface because we didn't do it in the kitchen either. It was impossible to get off of anywhere, so I just did it right over the top, and it's been totally fine in the kitchen for the past seven months. And for the backsplash, it was the same as the kitchen, this kind of webbed marble tile that has the backing on it. I did damage a little hole or a couple of damaged holes, but I got everything off from the top without creating holes, so I think we're good there. All right, it has taken us a solid two hours to clean up this space, but this is how it is looking so far. As you can see, it's nice and demoed. The floor, we have been vacuuming, and I want to share with you what I'm thinking for the tile because I want to do something interesting in here. I think just because it's connected to the kitchen right here, I don't think I want to paint this like some crazy color or anything. I really want it to flow nicely with the kitchen. So with the walls being a little bit more minimal, I thought we could go a little more maximal with our tile pattern. And so I'm gonna be a little daring. I actually wanna do a border along the outside. So as it gets here, I started doing some cuts for this border here. And these are six inches. The tile that I ordered is from Clay Tile and I will link it for you. Same one that is in the kitchen. In the kitchen, I used a square shape. I'm now using the rectangle shape. This is the first and like only tile project we've ever done and or I've ever done. Justin's done maybe a few. I don't know how many have you done. Two. Two, okay. So, <laughs> how many have done? I also want the border to come out in front of the washer and dryer. I'm not gonna have it go in the back there because you're not gonna see it. I'd rather have it be in front of the washer and dryer and add a little detail there, which would be really cute. Then we have the squares on either corner, which I love that idea. So it's gonna wrap all the way around here. And then I'm going to just worry about the stairs later because this is big enough of a project to worry about. Something that I'm doing on the tile saw is I actually have my square tile. I want them to be the exact size of this. So I simply slid it in and then locked the gauge here right where it needed to be locked. Every cut we make can just be consistent. We can just push them through kind of like an assembly line. level I decided that I wanted to just go six inches out from the wall and create a line so I was able to line up all of the border tiles with that line when it came to actually mortaring them down so I used that laser level drew with the red sharpie on the ground so it was really easy to see and then I started to cut more tiles I brought the tile saw inside at this point because it was nighttime so we started to lay down these border tiles just to get an idea and I had to cut so many of these so I cut them laid every single one down and it looked incredible 
incredible once they were all laid down. The next step, of course, was going to be mortaring. And I have mixed mortar many times on this channel, so I feel like I didn't need to share that, but I got a mortar that was intended for stone. My biggest tip is to always make sure you are using the right mortar when you're using tile because there's different types for different tiles, different sizes of tile, and also grout. There's different grout widths, different types of grout you use for different sizes. So just make sure you're always reading your products carefully. And that's what I did here. I used a stone mortar that I got from the brand called Maypie. I'll link the one I used below. And I just did the border all the way around, adding the squares in the corners. Why hello guys, it is day two of the tiling process in here and we have laid down all of the border. Let me flip it around and share with you. Okay, I didn't film any clips. I don't know how I missed that, but I am going in and adding a line down the center. Now this is going to be our central line that our herringbone is going to follow. When you're doing herringbone, you wanna start with a central line and have your first row follow that because everything else is just gonna branch out from there. And at first I was always set on having a grout that was kind of the same as everywhere else throughout the kitchen and the border, but then I realized I had a bunch of extra tiles and this is the last area that we're doing with these travertine tiles. And and I realized I could do a panel of completely solid herringbone that really to me felt so much more old world and kind of just more authentic to the home. Something about the grout with the herringbone felt a little farmhousey to me and that just was not what I was looking for with the space. And something about this just butted up herringbone just feels so right in here. There's something I love just the way that it feels. When you see it overall, I think you're going to love it as well. So for the mortaring, I actually ended up mixing the mortar just a bit thinner than I did for the border. And that's because I'm butting these up to each other. And I didn't want the mortar to be like so goopy and just excess on the actual kind of surface there that would make it flow out of the sides and make a really messy kind of cleanup process. So I actually made the mortar a little thinner so that it laid down a little flatter and then overall it just stuck down so much better. There was no seepage out of the edges. So I definitely recommend that if you're doing a herringbone like this, kind of butted up to each other. And I worked down my first line. As you can see, I did the whole first line and then you can from there just kind of add on to it. Now, the most complex part of this process is the edge cuts, but to be honest with you, with their little trick that I have it turned out so simple and easy so I'm just laying down all of these tiles you don't even have to space them which is so nice so this process really does go quite quick and I'm just working along laying down the tile edge cuts all I did was we laid out the pattern that just kind of flowed off the edge and used a wooden dowel the same exact thickness of the grout line so you're just gonna lay it as if the grout was in that same spot then trace the cut that you want to create and as you can see we have a line going across there then we just cut all the pieces on the tile saw as we needed going all the way down the line including little tiny cuts like these little triangles which are so simple tile saws I swear to you guys do not be scared of them they are so much more more easy to use than just a regular saw and then once you have all your cuts you can just bring it back make sure that it fits and if it doesn't you can just put it back in the tile saw kind of grind down some of the edges make them a little bit more snug if needed but this process really wasn't too bad and also you can use a pencil to just mark the side so you know what you're getting rid of that way you cut on the right side because the tile saw blade is kind of thick it does eat up some of the tile and this process continued for about four hours and sorry for the way I look here not that um, appealing. We finished the tile last night and I, I'm looking at it right now, I cannot wait to flip this camera around and share it to you. Um, they're jackhammering next door like they were in the last video. I also wanted to mention that if some of the clips sound off where I am filming from behind the camera pointing like down without me in it, it's because the microphone was forward and I didn't realize I have to flip it around each time. I'm getting used to this new camera, but I think it looks pretty good. Let me know what you think in the comments, but I have to share this floor. Here is what the floor is looking like this morning. It looks so, so good. So as you can see, it still needs to be cleaned off. We have to sponge it down, but so far it is looking so incredible. I'm just gonna walk around a little bit. Everything, like even all the cuts, all the borders, every little line and detail, I just feel like we just did such a great job. 
Look at how good. Even the small little section over here, it's like almost centered with how it's done. Like, I cannot believe we did this ourselves. And it only took us two days to do this. Now, I also wanted to tell you about what's happening back here. So I have a bunch of extra square tiles from the kitchen tile. Now, we are going to be putting them underneath the washer and dryer. Since it's going to be fully covered, I thought it'd be nice to have no grout lines, especially these thick kind of grout lines that we have. It makes it hard to move appliances around. So we are actually just doing solid square tiles underneath the washer and dryer and that's just going to make it so much easier to pull it in and out if we ever need to access the backside there. I wanted to share with you the floor and how pretty it turned out. I'm so happy and I kind of want to give you guys a little bit of the direction that we are going in here. The transition to the kitchen, which is right here, I'm going to be doing a little braid, which is going to kind of just be a herringbone that is singular and then either edge is going to have grout on it. I'll show that in the next part when we get to grouting, but that's going to be the transition. Now, of course, we are still needing to patch over this doorway. This used to lead into a small bathroom on the other side. Jackhammering has been happening for an hour, so I just want to just share with you my ideas. So once we have this kind of boarded back up, I then want to have some form of furniture piece here, whether it be like a long hutch or a tall one or a cabinet or just something here that could be used for storage. And I'm kind of picturing it as like a vintage style folk art hand-painted cabinet, which I kind of want to DIY, or I might DIY some sort of furniture piece for this area, but I'm kind of thinking of it as the storage area for the kitchen and the laundry room in terms of paper towels, extra towels, um, toilet paper, cleaning supplies, because the kitchen is on the smaller side, and also the laundry room just has a couple of uppers. Now that we can actually utilize it to have a nice piece of furniture here, and I'm picturing something arched like this tall, just pretty, and then we'll have new railing right along this edge here. Probably some sort of runner across the floor. We have a light fixture right here, and I actually love the scale and the shape of the fixture. I don't like the fixture itself, but it gives me an idea for what I want to kind of find to put there. Here is, of course, the ironing board, which I want to retrim out. I don't know if we should do something on either of these walls because they are substantial. I do think maybe like a piece of art here just to cover up this electrical box, um, which is completely screwed down. I think it was just like something that was covered up. If you have any ideas for this area, and then of course, washer and dryer here. And then on top of that, I want to do new countertops and a new backsplash. Whether that be something that I'm kind of thinking about DIYing. I have this idea, but I don't know. Doing stone countertops in here would be expensive. And I kind of want to like just make my own because I don't need a big area. So we shall see. And that's really all of the ideas for the laundry room so far. I also don't know what color to paint this. I'm kind of thinking of maybe taking a couple of neutral colors just from like Benjamin Moore or something and swatching them on this wall and living with them for a few days and just like kind of feeling them out with the tile as well. This white in here definitely is far too stark. It needs to go a little creamier, a little more like grayish in a sense, like a gray beige white tone. And once we have it all cleaned up and grouted by next video, I mean, I think this laundry room is going to start coming together really quickly. So I hope that you guys love it. And let me know in the comment section below what you would do in here. Like if you see anything that you would add, if you see anything you would change. Thank you all so much for watching. And do not forget that the vintage drop is this Sunday over on the website, 10 a.m. sharp on LoneFox.com. And I also got to say, I listed about 70 new holiday items on the site the other day. We're gonna have the biggest Christmas this year on LoneFox.com, so if you're shopping for Christmas, it is so beautiful. I've been shooting it and putting it on. A bunch is already active and a bunch is also selling out. And yeah, I will catch you all in my next video. Bye guys.